Right, so we've got this bit of U here. It's a really odd shaped piece of U. It's a spindle piece. The brain is in this orientation, although there is a knot here and there. And it is in rough shape. So let's get this round and see what we've got. Okay, so I turned it up to 1700 RPM. Should get a better cut. Let's take a look at that. Still got some flat spots here and here and here checking around this almost it's pretty close let's take a look We've got a saw mark here on this end we have to get rid of. It's pretty round though, so I'm going to have to trip up the two ends, put a tenon on one end. I think I'm going to put a tenon on this end because this is going to have to get all cut away. So the saw mark. So I'll use a parting tool, I think. No, actually a diamond parting tool. This one. So I've got to raise my tool rest a little bit. So I'm cutting close to center. Take a look at that. Okay, so it's flat on both ends. I'm gonna put a tenon here and then we'll get it in the jaws of a chuck. Gotta get up to speed. That's the size I'm looking for. A little bit smaller. That's close enough. Now with the skew we'll get a bit of a dovetail put into that. Tighten that up a little bit. You only really need that if it's in reverse, those two screws, to hold it on the spindle. I'm not going to use tailstock support because it's quite small. So I'll actually eject this so I don't get it in the elbow. So I often come in the workshop without a clue what I want to make. And I walk around the workshop and I find pieces of wood and pieces of whatever. Like this Banksia pot I'm supposed to turn for somebody. This piece of resin, which is actually stuck in the pipe. I'm going to have to turn the pipe off so it will go in the jaws. That will be a dragon egg hopefully one day. I don't always know what I'm going to do when I come into the shop, but uh, it's always fun. Okay. I don't even know what I'm doing with this. Making a little pot. Got to decide on a shape. 
So I think it's going to be wide at the base, coming in, narrow. What should I make? Okay, so I think I'm going to make a hollow form out of this. A little, it's going to be a very small hollow form, but uh, it's a beautiful piece of wood, so I want to make something out of it. So I'm going to bring the top in and the bottom in, and it's going to be rounded and then hollow. Using a what is it? Using a spindle gouge. I've got to come in quite a bit more to lose that little piece there. So I'm going to bring the torus closer to reduce vibration. bit more still. Still a bit more. Put it in there. shape that I'm looking for, but it needs cleaning up a little bit more. So I use my skewer as a negative rake scraper just to clean up the shape a little bit. I had a couple of tool marks I was trying to get rid of they are now gone so I'm going to remove that with a parting tool and then I'm going to drill into it with a forstner bit and then hollow the inside of this out and then I'll be parting the bottom off when it's all finished and ready to go it's actually quite a pretty piece of wood so I will use the diamond tip parting tool to remove that little piece at the end Adjusting the height of the tool rest to cut on center. divot in there for the drill to get started and then I'll choose a force a bit to go in. This is a 7 8 force a bit so I'm going to put this in the chuck, in the Jacobs chuck. And figure out my depth that I want to be. It just marks the drill bit with a pencil for my depth. Double check that. Should be good. Bring that up. And my speed is slow. I'm actually doing about 400 RPM.
clean out that a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to sand the outside of this right now. I'm going to start at, I think, 220. And it'll be 220 and 320. That's all I'm going to do to this. And then I'll hollow it out with the easy wood. So I sort my sandpaper out in a one of those toolboxes and I start with 60, 80, 100, 120, 150, 180, 220, 320, 400. That's really all I ever do. Um, usually I only go up to 320. Depends on the piece. And it depends on the piece as to where I start. Um, the less tool marks, the less tear out, the higher grit that you can go to. So I'm going to actually start this on... Uh, 220 grit and then 320 grit and that's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to be using the easy wood hollowers to hollow this out. Um, it's a very small item so it shouldn't take too much. Famous Lars words. So Let's bring, let's bring the camera in close because otherwise you're not going to see anything because I'm going to be standing right here. Good to use a compressor to blow the shavings out and see where you're at. It's actually looking really smooth in there. It's feeling really smooth. Um, I've got to go in a bit okay, more. So I've got some more in the bottom area down here that I need to get. So I'm going to use a straight cutter for that. This is a brand new cutting tip on here as well. So very sharp. Again, cutting on center. I'm not actually going to sand the inside because it would be hard to so the cut is actually pretty smooth on the inside anyway so I'm just going to try and really make the outside pretty and then part it off um, get a finish on it and what we're going to do is I'm going to start the parting off process at the bottom to figure out what my bottom is going to look like and then do the last little bit of finishing on the outside and then we'll part it off completely. Making the underside concave so it doesn't rock about on the surface when you set it down. I've just got to clean up that bottom lip edge maybe do a little bit more sanding and then finish. Just got to sand that bottom section where I just put the parting tool. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do now again is clean it with denatured alcohol. Just gets any sawdust residue off of the surface. And then when that is cleaned, take a sanding sealer. I'm not going to worry too much about the inside. Although I suppose I could put some sanding sealer in there, wouldn't hurt. Okay, so the sanding sealer will seal the fibers of the wood. Just give that a, a minute to dry off. 
and then uh, we'll move on to Yorkshire Grit original and then the microfine put a small amount of the original on and this will do your sanding liquid sandpaper start off slow and then increase your speed Move on to a fresh piece of paper towel when you think it's done its job. Doing about 1800 RPM. Remove all the residue. And it has done its job. You can actually do a couple of coats of Yorkshire Grit Original. Why not? Because it will bring the uh, shine even more so to this piece. Again, starting in slow speed. Just like sandpaper. Only a hell of, hell of a lot easier. And bringing the speed up. Okay, so I did the Yorkshire Grit Microfine after the original, same process, and now I'm going to put the Hampshire Sheen High Gloss and then the microcrystalline Wax. Essentially just wiping them on, allowing them to vap off, dry a little bit, and then uh, buffing, buffing them in. And then I'll be parting this off. So again, slow speed, just wipe it all over. and then let that dry. Okay, so I've allowed that to dry for a couple of minutes. Now what I'm going to do is burnish that in. On high speed. Same thing with my crystalline wax, I'll just apply a small amount over the surface. And I'll let that I'll let that dry and then I'll buff that in as well. Okay, I'm gonna buff that. Nice high speed again. making sure that there's no residue on there coming off on the paper towel so it's burnished in properly you don't want that surface to be tacky when you're done okay so I'm going to part this off The hollow form it looks I'm quite happy with the way it looks but I had a bit of an issue parting it off as I tore the fibers of the last little piece it twisted off and actually made a very very small hole so it's a funnel essentially but there is meat there so what I'm gonna do is take that little piece there and I'm gonna glue it in there because I don't think it would really notice so the first thing I'm gonna do is sand this down and then see what I got Okay, so as you can see the small hole is right in the center and I'm actually going to fill it with uh, sawdust. As I was sanding it filled up with sawdust and I'm going to put just a drop of super glue there. And I think that that would be more than adequate to hide that because it was such a small hole 
Okay, so what I'm going to do, continue sanding that. And I think what I'll do now is I'll sand this by hand up to uh, 320 and then put some sanding sealer on it and just kind of buff it in and wax it a little bit. And then we'll come back to you with some pictures at the end. And thanks for watching. There it is. It's a very small hollow form uh, made from from you. Um, it was a piece that my uh, buddy gave to me quite a few years ago when I first started wood turning. And it's been sat in my shop all these years and I finally got the last piece of it turned. Um, this is literally three inches around by two inches high. It's very small but it's a little hollow form. Um, it's great practice for the easy wood tools. Uh, numbers one, two and three. I have the medium set. There is also uh, a smaller set and a larger set. Um, but there it is. I know it's been a few weeks since I've put any videos out, but I've been busy in the shop doing all kinds of changes uh, from dust extraction for my table saw to putting a blind up that's behind me so the shavings from the lathe literally get stopped three feet behind me and they drop to the floor right there. Normally they'd be all across the entire shop. so. That was definitely a huge bonus to have that. Also I have a paper towel rack which is just above me now which I just made yesterday actually because um, I'm always losing my paper towels so now they're just above my head there. I've got all kinds of projects on the go and I haven't really been doing much videoing but I've been extremely busy doing some flat work lately so coming up I'll probably do uh, some flat work videos and uh, also some uh, Celtic pens that I've been um, making so I've got to kind of push the limits on my uh, on Celtic pens and see what I can come up with so thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe and I'll see you again for the next wood turning video take care now